from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Veeam on 2020. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of Veeam on 2020. Online this year, uh, we've done the event for many years, and uh, just being able to reach the, the Veeam executives, some of their partners and the like, where they are around the globe. Uh, really excited to be able to dig in, and we're going to talk some numbers, some analysis. And to help me do that, uh, I've got two Veeam Cube alumni. Uh, we'd had them on the Cube before they were on Veeam. Always excited to get to talk to them and dig into the numbers with them now that they are at Veeam. Uh, Dave Russell is the Vice President of Enterprise Strategy, and Jason Buffington is the Vice President of Solution Strategy, both with Veeam. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Steve. Thanks for having us. All right, uh, first, I, I guess, you know, let, let me ask how are you guys doing? You know, we, we were uh, having a little bit of a discussion before we came on here as to, you know, everyone is now inundated with data and numbers and the like uh, with this global pandemic. Uh, you know, Dave, you know, how, how things doing in your neck of the woods? And uh, then, then we'll go to Jason. Yeah, well, you know, I literally cannot complain personally. Um, Veeam itself is doing incredibly well as an organization. We'll double click on that here. But you know, in terms of, of data, particularly as it relates to this space that we're in, backup and recovery availability, cloud data management, the recent data for first half 2020 is actually fascinating. We're gonna double click on that a little bit more, right, Jason? We are. Um, now, as far as how we're doing, you know, I've been at every Veeam on that we've had. Um, uh, the first three as an analyst, the last two as a VP. I've never gotten to do one in my pajama bottoms though. So that's kind of a nice change just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, uh, but yeah, the, the other thing which has been kind of fun is, is that because we haven't been traveling, um, it really gave Dave and I a chance to kind of get back to our roots a little bit and really dig into research and how do you apply research to product direction and go to market? And so it's been a fun project that, uh, that we're culminating with, uh, with Veeam on. Yeah, uh, Jason, please don't be giving out secrets. I'm not, I'm not saying if you look up Dave Vellante's Twitter handle that you'll find the suit on the top, the shorts on the bottom look, uh, what I refer to as cube casual uh, for <laughs> doing some of these uh, remote events. Uh, but uh, you, know, you two uh, have a breakout that you're doing uh, really looking at digital transformation and IT modernization. Um, you know, digital transformation, I'm sure, you, you know, you, both of you from the analyst standpoint, for a while it was a bit of a buzzword. Uh, you know, today, when you, just with the backdrop of the global pandemic, it's like, well, if you have had the, the, the chance to go through the digital transformation, hopefully, you know, you, you get things put to the test. You're relying on data, uh, you should be more agile, and those are all things that I think help the remote workforce and what they're doing. But if you hadn't finished that or you know, either started or in the middle of that journey, you know, a big question is, you know, what are you doing? Will this accelerate it? Will it slow it down? So excited to dig into your CXO research. Uh, mm -hmm. what, why don't you give us a little bit of the background? You know, how long has this been going on? Who you're talking to as, as, as part of this, this research? Sure, well, as far as the research itself goes, um, so Veeam uh, went to an outside panel and said, hey, don't tell anybody who it's from, but we need to interview these kinds of personas and these kinds of folks. We did um, 1,550 enterprises, and by that definition, meaning 1,000 users and up, across 18 different countries um, around the world. And then we even asked some questions around not only what country are you in, but in what countries do you influence data protection strategy and architecture? Um, everyone from um, IT architects all the way up through CXOs were part of that survey. And we got some great data back, not only from an executive perspective of what are the expectations of IT, but also from the IT implementer, IT architects perspective on what are their real world challenges today. And that's some of the things that we were at Veeam really keen to understand more to make sure that we're building the right things and saying the right things for our customers and our prospects. Excellent, and Dave, maybe give us a little bit of a backdrop. Uh, you know, when I, I think about enterprises, you know, we all talk about these mega waves. Uh, you, know, you know, the things that I talk about is, you know, when I talk to the CXO suite, it's not that they have, well, you know, I've got a multi-cloud strategy, but no, I'm figuring out how cloud changes what I'm doing. Digital transformation is one of those things that brings together, you know, the business 
and the IT, and hopefully, you know, something I know we've all been talking about uh, for quite a long time, IT just can't be a separate thing or, you know, a cost center, but needs to really respond to the business. What's that backdrop of digital transformation? And, you know, bring us inside a little bit uh, what, what your learnings were. Yeah, to me, I think I like the notion of digital transformation because it's very specific to every business, maybe even every business unit. Meaning it's not a case of a vendor saying, here's what your project should be. Rather, it's more a notion of whatever initiative you have to try to increase customer intimacy, to be able to contain costs, expand your reach. That's really what digital transformation is here to support. Excellent. And Jason, you know, give us a little bit of color as to you know, some of the findings. Yeah, so I mean, I think the big ones that we looked at were, you know, what were the major IT challenges you had overall, and um, and maybe not to so much of a surprise, but uh, staffing and legacy infrastructure were still some of the biggest things that were holding back IT organizations, which I think is especially interesting in the landscape that we're in right now, right? Because um, your staff can't be in the places where they used to be, and from a legacy perspective, Stu, I know you love data as much as we do. Um, the uh, you know if if organizations are spending between 68 and 82 percent of their money and their dollars on the status quo, that doesn't leave a whole lot left for the things that you'd like to do, like improving customer experience, like accelerating the um, the uh, employees of your business. So things like digital transformation tend to get hindered by the same stuff that hinders IT modernization and just get rid of the buzzword, just trying to do better. Uh, in IT for the sake of the business, but really those have been kind of the big gaps. Yeah, and I think Jason hit a key point there, Stu, of you know the issue right now is a lot of us are just trying to run the business, like literally keep the lights on. You know, and Jason mentioned the stats of high 60s, low 70s, just you know trying to keep status quo. But digital transformation, in my mind, is about obviously trying to run the business while you're seeking to grow the business and aspirationally hoping to transform your business to really improve customer intimacy and success of end customers as well as partners. So if done right, pursuing digital transformation can help you with tactical needs as well as strategic outcome. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it, it's a little sad, I think, from an industry standpoint, you talk about how much money and time is spent on keeping the lights on, uh, I feel like 10, 15 years ago, it was the, you know, the 80 to 85%. If you're saying, you know, oh, we, we've whittled away a little bit. It's now in the low 70s, some really good companies. It's getting to 60%, but we haven't flipped things yet. Um, right. I'm curious, you know, uh, you, you have this position. They don't know that it was sponsored by Veeam. So um, how do cloud as a general technology and then, you know, data protection and availability specifically, uh, you know, fit into overall priorities for uh, that that IT modernization. So there were um, there were two questions that we really focused on. That I they're my two favorite slides um, in the in the whole deck. Um, the the first one that I thought was really interesting is when we asked organizations what does modern data protection look like or innovative, and I think we used a few different buzzwords along the way. Um, and we asked them check all of these capabilities that might apply, and then which one is the most definitive. And we actually got two different sets of answers depending on how you pivot that data. If you ask uh, uh, most common responses, modern data protection looks cloudy. And what I mean by that is the, the top choices um, uh, scored were the ability to do DR as a service, um, the ability to integrate on-premise and uh, cloud-based as part of your data protection architecture, and then the ability to move data from one uh, cloud to another, which certainly reinforces the fact that we are not only in a hybrid world, but in a multi-hybrid world as well. So if you're looking for most common answers, modern data protection looks cloudy. But if you flip it over and you say, what is the most definitive feature? You actually get something very different. You find out that the ability to leverage orchestration and workflow, the ability to manage via APIs and systems management, the ability to be part of a cybersecurity uh, strategy. So what you see is, is that modern data protection in general has to be cloudy, but more importantly, backup should not sit on an island of its own. It should be a cohesive part of a broader IT experience that's managed by something broader, that's 
part of the provisioning and systems framework. So those two answers kind of tell us what should we not only be making sure that we're continuing to build on, but also making sure that we're communicating as far as, you know, does Veeam meet the bar for what um, organizations are looking for in a modern or innovative data protection strategy? Yeah, that, that's really interesting. Uh, you know, I, I guess one of the big things I've seen over the last 12 to 18 months is maturation of things like, you know, a real hybrid strategy. So, you know, if I look at Veeam, you know, the, the, the most critical uh, partnerships, of course, are, you know, VMware uh, from a historical standpoint and things like Microsoft going forward. And both of them have made big strides over the last couple of years as to not just, you know, on-premises versus public cloud, but how do all of these things work together? The discussions that we've been having about, you know, cloud is not necessarily a destination, but it's more of an operating model. And as people build out their architectures, the, all the things you mentioned there, it's not a place or a destination, but it, it's more of that architectural view and can live across lots of different environments. Does that, yeah, that, that make sense? Key. Yeah, yeah, it's across, it's a horizontal play really. It's not moving from point A to point B, it's really embracing expanded choices. So you mm -hmm. know, what we found when we did this survey is directionally where organizations are at today with on-prem physical, on-prem virtual, going towards cloud, and then how they responded their intention two years later, there weren't major surprises there, meaning the shift was increasingly more towards cloud, but it also wasn't a case that on-prem physical goes to zero. So uh, any more than it's a case of an organization goes 100% all in on one hyperscale or public cloud provider. So it's really about supporting a mix and it's about offering choice because every business or maybe more specifically, every workload within a business might have their own natural migration associated with what they need to do, what's appropriate, you know, given their business realities and their desires. So if we double click on what's really important from backup, the number one thing that came back from our global survey, which is a little incriminating on the state of the industry was, the number one thing that would make us want to change our backup provider is so that the application would back up. That is an amazingly shocking statement. That's like saying, Sue, if you were to change cars, automobiles, what would you look for first and foremost? And your response is an automobile that started. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 is, that is really scary, right? In 2020, so Dave and I have each been in backup almost exclusively for 30 years each, right? And, and Stu, you've, you've been able to spell backup for almost the same length of time. And we've been doing this a really long time. And in 2020, when IT pros were asked what would get them to change, it's, they'd like it to work the way they thought it would when they bought it. I mean, that's just a really damning statement. And then beyond that, then the next drivers, certainly economics came into play. So the number two answers were um, uh, reducing hardware and software costs and improving TCO and ROI were two and three. And then um, capabilities around improving RPO, RTO, SLAs, and then um, ease of use. I mean, that kind of rounds out the top five um, with cloud coming in right behind that. So not a whole lot of surprise there, but um, what a terrible statement for the industry that we just like it to work. All right, how about some good news? What, uh, what recommendations or guidance, uh, did, is there anything that you got out of it that you know, best practices or leaders in the space or what peers would recommend to, 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 the, to each other? So I think the two things that I took away that um, I thought was really interesting from a best practices and moving forward, um, data reuse scored really, really high. So the interest in leveraging, and we um, the, the survey actually asked several different scenarios for what folks were either doing or aspiring to do around data use. And um, you can call it copy data management, you can call it secondary storage use cases, you can pick whatever marketing buzzword you want, but the bottom line is don't just put your data in a backup repository and wait for bad things to happen. Do something with that data. DevOps acceleration, patch testing, risk mitigation, quarantine for forensics for cyber. But there was a lot of, of uh, yes, we're starting to do, and also, yes, we're aspiring over the next 12 months. So I think data reuse was a really big thing um, that I was so glad that folks were getting uh, along the way. And then also the recognition that with the intolerance of downtime and the intolerance of data loss that was measured in the survey, 
it was really obvious that a lot more organizations understand they have to be combining not only backups, but also snapshots and replication in a consistent way. Um, because you can't meet the SLAs that most organizations have today if the only thing you're doing is just nightly backup. Now at Veeam, we would say, great, you ought to do snapshots, you ought to do replication, you ought to do backup. Please don't use three different tools times each one of those times each workload. It's not economically or operationally viable. So certainly in, in, uh, that's good news for us because we manage all three, but those were kind of the two big drivers that I was most excited about. Yeah, and if I take what we got from the data protection report and then couple that with recent industry analysis reports from like IDC and Gartner, if I merge that together, I think one of the reasons why Veeam has been very successful, you know, literally knocked on wood, but Veeam is up as a company 10% year over year, October to October, or I'm sorry, April to April. And that's been true for all 12 years that Veeam has been shipping backup product. So in a tough time, actually doing extremely well, still hiring, still expanding, Gartner has Veeam for calendar year 2019, moving from number four in market globally to number three, IDC maintains Veeam as number one in market in Europe. And of the top five vendors, three of the five were negative year over year. Veeam was the highest sequentially positive, year over year positive. And I think the reasons why now going back to the survey in my mind was due to the software defined nature of the solution. And what I mean by that in particular, why that has customer value, especially now in a current pandemic situation is, you can leverage the existing infrastructure that you've got. We have been around and remember the macroeconomic issue of 2008. Organizations held on to their assets much, much longer. Refresh cycles slowed down. So the ability to leverage the infrastructure that you have to scale out horizontally, to be able to ingest more data, to have a horizontal management plane, to be able to have a serve as a repository that could include cloud and object storage, just allows you to better leverage the investments you've made, but to flex appropriately for workloads and to be able to expand into things like public cloud and object storage as you see fit. Excellent. Well, Dave and Jason, thank you so much for the updates. Real pleasure to catch up with you. Always, always great to dig into the, the data with both of you. Thank you, Enjoy Stu. Good to see you. All right. Stay tuned for more coverage from Veeamon 2020 online. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.